Okay, botany students, so here we go with our Sunday afternoon plant tissue lecture. I'm in my porch. Looks good. <sighs> Smells wonderful. It's about to rain. Okay, so today we're going to talk about tissues. Tissues? No, not these kind of tissues. Uh, we're going to talk about plant tissues. Got the Captain America shirt on. We're ready to go here, so let's find out what we're going to talk about. Okay, so if you're doing the outline view, we're going to go over the three organs of seed plants, the different types of tissues that you'll find, and then we'll go in depth into each one of those and round out the discussion with meristems, which are how plants grow. Okay, so the three principal organs of seed plants are the roots, stems, and leaves. Oop, didn't mean to move that on you, sorry guys. So roots, stems, and leaves. Now we don't count flowers in that because not all plants have flowers. And not all plants have roots and stems either, but um, for the vascular plants, plants that ha are able to conduct water, things that are more evolutionarily advanced than algae and the bryophytes or mosses. So we're going to talk about the higher level plants. Okay. Okay, different angle. Um, so seed plants are linked together by tissue systems that do all of the following. They produce hormones, they produce um, sugars, everything that the plant needs. They store all of those items. They can transport nutrients, provide physical support, and also provide protection. So we'll hit on a couple of those as we talk about each different type of tissue. So that first type of tissue that we're going to talk about is the dermal tissue, which is found on the outside. Over here in the diagram, you see dermal tissue is circled, and then there's a little red arrow pointing to each of the dermal tissues that would be found in the roots, in the stem, and also in the leaves. So we have dermal tissue all over the plant. Dermal tissue is the protective outer covering that is made up of a single layer of cells called the epidermis. Okay. And then it's also usually covered with a thick waxy layer called the cuticle which is going to protect against water loss. This down here you can see the water beating on the plant. Sorry my dog's distracting me. Okay. Everyone say hi to my dog Kyle. Kyle say hi. Ooh, look at the camera. There you go. He's bothering me to pet him. Okay. So let me move my face out of the way for you. Okay, so dermal tissues, there's some special structures on the outside of the plant that are going to help the plant. One of those structures are called trichomes. Trichomes are tiny little projections that um, protect the leaf. They have chemicals. They can help the plant to capture an, an insect if it's a carnivorous plant, like um, with like, sticky substance. Um, one, a very well-known common drug uh, produces a chemical in these trichomes that people like to smoke. Um, and then there's also root hairs. Root hairs help roots to absorb water. They kind of almost, for looking at it here, look like a fungus growing on the roots, but it's not. It's just little root hairs. These little hairs are able to get into the little tiny spaces in the soil and then those uh, spaces have water in them and it helps the plant to absorb the most water that it possibly can. So the next time you see something that looks like this, it is not fungus, it's actually root hairs that are growing on your plant. Okay, so we're going to just watch a quick little video on um, the sundew if it ever loads here. Um, we shall see. So here are those trichomes um, with the little sticky balls on the end that's going to help this sundew to catch this poor unsuspecting fly. One of my favorite plants because it's so cool.
teleport fly. You're thinking, why doesn't he just fly away? No, he can't. Look at that sundew wrapping its trichomes around that bug. Oh, a twofer. Help, I'm stuck. Sucks to be that bug. Aren't you glad there wasn't, isn't one of these um, big enough to tackle us? That'd be kind of scary. Okay. Probably have seen enough of the uh, sundew. forward a little bit here. Okay. Hopefully you've enjoyed that um, little video and remember those are trichomes. I'll see if I can get some other examples of some. Okay, we got one more video to watch because this is a super cool time-lapse video. Um, it's a dork thing, I know, but I love time-lapse video of a bean that's starting to grow, and you're going to see the little root hairs developing and little secondary roots. Okay, so here we go. This guy, Neil Bromhall, does all kinds of really interesting time-lapse. Okay, so now on to the second type of tissue, which are vascular tissues. Vascular tissues do just what they say, just like our vascular system. It's a transport system that, like our veins, that is able to contain for the plant water and sugars and other minerals. Now for us, it contains our blood along with oxygen and sugar and water. So the vascular tissues are only going to be found in those highly evolved plants, starting with the ferns and above. And their main job, like I said, is to um, provide water for the plant. But they also have a big function in supporting the plant body. Later on, we're going to talk about how wood is formed, and vascular tissue plays the big part in forming wood in a plant. Okay, So down here we've got two types and we're going to get a little bit more in depth into each of those types because they can get pretty complicated. Okay, so the two types of vascular tissue are xylem, which conducts water, and phloem, which carries dissolved food. Now one of the easiest ways to remember phloem is that phloem and food both have that F sound to them. And then I also can remember xylem conducts water and it conducts it in an upward motion because X, W, and U are all towards the end of the alphabet. So if those little tips uh, help you, uh, hopefully they will. But xylem conducts water in an upward motion, and phloem conducts food or dissolved food in a downward motion. can also go across. Uh, vascular tissues are made up of long, slender cells that connect like sections of a pipe. Okay, and remember there's two types, and we'll talk about each one of those. Okay, we're going to start with xylem. Xylem is made up of 
just move, sorry, move my picture there to get the screen out of the way. Um, xylem is made up of two main types of cells that are called vessel cells and tracheid cells. Remember from doing our lab, we said we had simple tissues and we had complex tissues. Well, simple tissues were made up of only one cell type, that would be dermal, and the ground tissues that we'll get to in a minute. The vascular tissues are a complex tissue type because they're made up of more than one type of cell. So in, vas in the vascular tissue xylem, we have tracheids and vessel elements. Okay? Tracheids are the main cells that make up the xylem. And you can see them over here, the little hole, like they look like little holes. Okay. And then the pits are inside of the tracheids, and they're going to allow water to diffuse or move into the surrounding tissue. So we can, I tried to circle that, but that didn't work. Um, we can see some of those little um, pits. They kind of look like they'd be almost nuclei, but they're not. They're just little tiny holes. Uh, which is kind of strange because if you think of a straw having all these little tiny holes, it wouldn't do a very good job of sucking water up. But plants are very good at what they do. Okay, okay continuing on with xylem. Some plants, um, like angiosperms, have these vessel elements. Not all of the plants do. So, like ferns aren't going to have vessel elements, but... Um, the flowering plants do. And these vessel elements are a little bit wider than the tracheids. So we can see here the big vessel elements. There's another one. There's some more. Okay. And they are going to help to also conduct water, but they're also going to provide strength for the plant. Okay, I know I've inserted a few videos, um, but I think this one is worth watching, and it's just part of a video that, uh, a series called Private Life of Plants, and maybe we'll get to watch one or two um, during the term, the rest of the term, but I do want to show this section because they have a really good animation of the xylem and um, phloem. So right now, this is David Attenborough, and he's going to just talk to us about how much water a plant has to suck up, and then show you some more specifics. So here we go. Growing 70 feet tall, like the sycamore, brings it great advantages. It allows it to overtop its neighbors so it can get all the sunshine it needs. And it enables it to spread out a huge surface area of leaves and through their pores it can suck in carbon dioxide from the air. But it also brings considerable problems. As well as carbon dioxide, the leaves need water in order to make food. And water in the leaf can easily evaporate through the pores. Indeed, 90% of the water sucked in by the roots is lost through the surface of the leaves at the top of the tree. But pumping water up here to this height can cause considerable problems. jet of water, 70 feet up in the air here, it takes that huge, big, noisy engine down there. But this tree pumps up about 100 gallons every hour and manages to do so in total silence. How? The answer is to be found in the tree's trunk. The central part of this is wood. Around the outside of this pillar, there are ranks of hair-thin pipes. Those immediately beneath the bark carry the food-laden sap down from the leaves. That's some phloem. Those were the end caps that we'll talk about in a minute. Now we're going to get to the xylem. Farther inside the trunk, there's another set of tubes. These are the ones that carry the water up. 
they are continuous pipes that extend the whole length of the trunk. As the water evaporates in the leaves above, the long thin threads of it are pulled up the tubes, into the branches and ultimately into the leaves themselves. Some of it is used in the food making process, the rest evaporates through the leaf pores as vapour. Okay, so I did something funky with this uh, video. See if you can find me on the screen there. I uh, don't know how to fix it, but hopefully you can still hear me. Okay, so the second type of vascular tissue that we're going to encounter is phloem. And remember, phloem carries dissolved food. They both start with F. Phloem is made up of sieve tube elements and companion cells. Okay. The um, sieve tube elements have many holes in them. Okay, um, and then the companion cells are pictured right here, and they're the ones that still have the nuclei. So the sieve tubes look just like a big, long tube, an empty, hollow tube, and they have these things called sieve plates or end walls. And the end walls have many small holes in them, and that allows the nutrients to flow through. This is obviously pictured a lot bigger than it actually is. But this would be kind of like a strainer. Um, that you'd use to strain your pasta. So we have big holes and sieve tube elements and then we have the companion cells which help to keep the sieve tubes alive because they don't have any way of keeping themselves alive with no nucleus, no uh, DNA. They cannot do any of the normal cell functions. Okay, I'm back again. I don't know what I did with that last one. So let's do a quick review before we get on to ground tissues. We've talked about dermal tissues, we've talked about vascular tissues, and both of those um, will be found in the higher plants. And now we're going to talk about ground tissue, the third type of tissue that is found in all three of the plant organs, major organs. Okay. The ground tissue has two main functions, to produce and store sugars, and then to contribute to the phys physical support of the plant. Okay, so that's going to be a, a secondary function, um, but is an, a, an important, excuse me, function of plants that don't form wood, the ones that stay green all the time. Okay, there are three types of um, ground tissue, and they are parenchyma, colenchyma, and sclerenchyma. You should try to say them. It's kind of fun. Parenchyma colenchyma, and sclerenchyma. Some people say parenchyma. That's fine too, but it really is parenchyma if you look at the phonetic um, spelling of it. Okay, so we will talk about each one of these types, and you should have seen each one in the lab that you just completed. Okay, so we have the first ground tissue, the parenchyma. This was when you looked at the tomato, you got to see parenchyma cells. Probably not this pretty and clear, but hopefully you got to see something close to that. So the parenchyma has very thin cell walls. We can see the cell walls here, and I had asked you to actually outline some of those in your lab when you took a picture of it or drew a picture of the tomato. So those are the very, very thin cell walls. You can't even see the cell membrane, okay, in those. They have a large central vacuole, okay. I don't know about you, but when I look at these cells, I don't really see too much. Um, here are some organelles here, probably a nucleus and some other stuff. Here's some other stuff. Um, organelles pushed off to the side, but pretty much these cells are just one big large central vacuole. If you wanted to compare it to something that would kind of be like our fat cells, they're just a huge storage cell. That's why when you take a bite of that tomato, you're just, the juice just kind of flows down your chin and everything, or think of like watermelon, how it's very liquidy. Okay, so all of that central vacuole storage is where we get that um, texture from. Okay, 
in the leaf, now they're going to be a little bit different, and these cells are going to have tons of chloroplasts, thousands of chloroplasts, and um, they're going to help with photosynthesis. Okay, sorry I keep saying um a lot. I'll try and do better here. Okay, so the next type of ground tissue is called calenchyma. Calenchyma, um, like the celery that you looked at, have strong, flexible cell walls. So if you think about celery, um, you can bend it, okay, and uh, but it doesn't necessarily break. So you have to apply some pressure to get it to break, but it's very flexible. Or um, an example of that would be a rubber band, where it has strength to hold things together. Um, you can pull on it, but it also has that flexibility. Most of the time you're going to see calenchyma when um, the plant needs some help to support the cell organs like the roots or the stem or the leaf when it's needed uh, for support. Okay. And our third type of ground tissue is the sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma tissues, uh, you saw those in the pear, they have extremely thick cell walls can see that big thick cell wall here okay and um, very rigid okay and then there are these secondary pieces called sclerids these sclerids are really really hard cell walls and that's what gives that pair that gritty sort of texture to it you're also going to find these in seed coats and other plant fibers so um, cotton has some of this in there, or hemp, excuse me, will have a lot of sclerenchyma because it needs to be very strong. The, um, when you eat popcorn and you get those little um, pieces stuck under your gum and it kind of hurts and it's sharp, that's the seed coat and that's made of the sclerenchyma. Okay, so it's the strongest and toughest of the plant tissues. Okay, and we're nearing the end here. Our last little bit is on plant growth. Did you ever notice that plants always seem to come back to life every year, especially in Wisconsin, we can see that. Um, the leaves fall off, it gets to be winter, and yay, now it's spring again. And Sorry about that. Excuse that interruption from my dogs. So um, every year the trees seem to be um, vibrant and young again um, with their new leaves and new flowers and everything that they produce. Kind of like a fountain of youth, but for plants. I don't know where my screen is. You can barely see me. I don't know what's going on there, but hopefully you, you are hearing me. So... Um, the apical meristems are the areas where the plant is growing. So we looked at some meristem activity when we did that mitosis lab, when we looked at the onion root tip. There was a reason why we actually had to look at the root tip, because that's where the plant grows from. So plants are kind of unique in that. Um, they don't elongate in, in this section here. They grow... Um, they add on to the tips of their roots, and they add on to the tips of the shoots. So they can form new branches, like there or there, and they can add on to the growth on the top, but they're not going to get longer throughout this area. Okay, They add on to the top. So as an example, that would be, like to add on to the tip of it, it would be like if your hair, instead of growing from the top of your head, grew from the bottom of your, your hair. So um, if you dyed your hair, then, you know, whatever you dyed, it would stay that way, and then your natural color would come out at the ends. That would look kind of funky. But so plants do grow a little bit differently than us, um, but they have these things called meristems, and special ones called the apical meristems. Apical means top, apex is, is peak or top, so those are the ones that are at the top. And then they do have lateral meristems which are on the sides that are going to allow the plant to grow wider. Okay. Last slide here on plant growth. 
And when we first see those cells that are growing in that root tip, um, and you could see this in the lab that we did, they all look the same. They're all um, thin cell walls, they have a nucleus, everything just looks kind of normal, right? But then with time, they turn into the specialized tissues. So the plant knows what it's doing, and it knows that it has to make a new dermal tissue. So uh, even though those cells start out all the same, they'll eventually turn into dermal tissue, or they can turn into a vascular tissue. It can turn into uh, parenchyma uh, or parenchyma, uh, calenchyma or sclerenchyma. So they have different things that they can turn into. A thing that you can compare this to would be like the stem cells in humans. So marrow stems of plants are very similar to stem cells in humans. I hope that you've had a better appreciation for the different parts of the plant. I know that this may not be the most exciting things to um, talk about, but I think it's really interesting So we start to think about the foods that we eat and um, the plants that we see around us, that it's not just, oh, it's just another plant, that it actually has different organs, it has different parts, all of those parts work together, and even breaking it down further, not only do all those parts work together, but each part has specialized tissues that can help it to do the things that it needs to do. And trees have been around a lot longer than us, and they didn't get that way because um, they're not functional. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, this has been your notes uh, for a Sunday afternoon, and I will see you in class.